what's going man what's up and welcome back to another video today we got another reaction video another oh this time it's four true costco horror stories animated thought it would have been three and jit fooled me um the link to this video will be in the description so make sure y'all check that out but let's go ahead and get into this one i don't know what costco is you pay a monthly fee in order to shop at the store the prices are a little bit cheaper and you can buy things in bulk which is why there's a membership the store is massive and they also have a gas station at most locations mm. this is generally it's at the true. back of the parking lot and you can get cheaper gas if you're a member when i was a member there the store would always be super busy when i shopped people would seemingly be everywhere. is it raining the area was pretty populated so it made sense but it still surprised me even more busy than the store though was the gas station I know how everybody goes crazy over gas prices, so I think all the members like to get gas at Costco. I would always get my gas there when I was a member because I would save a lot of money. Plus, I only lived about 10 minutes away from the store. One time, I had to go grocery shopping at Costco and get gas as well. I was almost out when I pulled into the parking lot saw a long line of cars for the gas station. Jesus. This was not all that uncommon. Yeah, bumper but I'd never seen too. it quite as long as it was on this particular day. There were four gas pumps, so eight total cars could be fueling at once. Costco had a few employees out there to work near the gas station and had two people literally there to help control the line. It would have been chaos without them, but even with them, it was bad. There were two main lines of cars and probably Such five to ten cars species. in each line. That's how backed up it was. I considered waiting until later to get gas, but ultimately decided to just get in the back of the line. I went into the left line and committed to it. Things actually started to move faster than I expected them to. I moved up a couple of spaces, but was still last in line. That boy got good intuition. Soon some other people joined in behind me and in the next line over as well. Luckily for me, the line that I was in for some reason was moving faster than the other one. I guess I just got lucky. When there was just one car in front of me waiting to get gas, somebody left. The car in front of me moved up. I was about to drive up, and then I would be on deck. But as I started driving, I saw the car in the other line to the right try pulling in front of me. I couldn't believe oh, it. This guy can't. was supposed to stay in his line. Nobody was just switching lines. Yeah, I didn't go in and quickly pulled forward. He had to stop, and then was like diagonal between the line that he had been in and my line. He then honked at me, but I didn't care. Yeah, After that, you. though, I saw his door open up. He actually got out and started yelling at me. Look at him. He was Some a bigger coke. guy, but not that tall. He had a Look dark at him. must. Look at him. When, when just, just a piece of advice for life. When, when you see, <clears throat> when you're a public and you see people like this, like you see how his eyes is, you see how he's just angry for no reason. This person is probably on coke you just need to stay away from people like this there's nothing there's nothing you could do there's nothing you feel me you might have you just you just get your distance type of thing you don't even mind these people you just you don't even look at them don't that's also another thing never make eye contact never make eye contact mustache and his head was shaved i rolled down my window a little and yelled back to stay in his line the guy started cursing and yelling at me saying how I wasn't moving up fast enough and he was in a hurry. He started going, some of us have places to be. The guy was causing Did a whole scene. Eat nuts or die. Someone else actually rolled down their window and told him to get back inside of his car. Within minutes, one of the employees that was working over there came over and tried to calm the guy down. He finally went back inside of his vehicle. Then it was finally my turn to get gas. I did and then left the gas station and headed to the Costco parking lot. I parked my car Jay, and then no went stopping. inside. When I was inside, I got a cart and started shopping for the things that I was getting. Not a whole lot, just a few food items. I pushed my cart down one aisle and got some things. As I was pushing my cart further to the back of the store, I heard another person walking behind me. I didn't think anything of it. The person was walking really fast and passed yeah. me on the right side. When they passed me, I saw who it was. The same guy who had yelled at me before. After passing me, he went right in front of my cart and then abruptly stopped. I had to stop quickly, and my cart hit the guy in his back a little. He then turned around and asked me what my effing problem was and flipped me off. I had enough of this guy. I told him to leave me alone, man. and I was tired of his nonsense. 
but probably didn't say it quite like that. The guy cursed at me one more time and then walked away. I watched him go back towards the front of the store. I was really glad to see him gone. Our interaction inside the store lasted for no more than a minute. I was able to continue my shopping without any more problems. I looked around almost constantly to make sure that I wouldn't go near the guy in case he was still inside the store. I just wanted to avoid him because he seemed to be nothing but trouble. But luckily, I didn't see him for the rest of the time that I was shopping in there. I checked out um, he's and left the store. Slow. I walked back to my car in the parking lot, in and only to see that it was all scratched up. The mm. guy had keyed my car. My car is black, and both sides had about four or five long scratch marks on them. DK. I was so angry and knew exactly who had done it. I called the police right there and waited for them to arrive. Then I told them the whole story. I didn't know the man's name or license plate, but I did know his car. Plus, I figured that he was a Costco member. He ended up being located and was forced to pay for my car to be repaired. He was also banned from Costco. Yeah. After that experience, though, oh, I, I hope that I never see him again. I no longer have a Costco membership. That's not the reason why I stopped it. I just prefer to go to other stores now. I will never forget that experience, though. That wasn't even really a scary story for real. That bit was more like a. I used to have a Costco membership. Like a, a more. I had to cancel. Crazy encounter. After what was one of the creepiest experiences of my life. It all started last summer. I would shop at Costco every single week. I had a routine that I would go every Saturday morning and buy all of my items for the week. I would usually get most of the same items as well. Most of it was food and things like that, and it would usually That's take real. me less than 30 minutes to get it all done. The membership saved me lots of money because I used it so frequently. Plus, there was a Costco just over five minutes away from my house. One time, I went to Costco like any other and then returned back home. Everything was fine, and later in the day, I got the mail. I lived in a small but nice house in a pretty typical neighborhood. When I got my mail, most of it was just bills and advertisements, but I had this one letter that stood out from the rest. She got it was no typed, hose. but seemed like an actual letter lame, because it wasn't professional looking or anything. There was no return address, and it didn't say who it was from either, but it did say, please read. When I opened it up, it was a typed letter on one piece of paper to me. The letter said, hi, you're a beautiful woman, and I love to watch you shop every week at Costco. I'm writing you this because I want to meet you sometime soon. After I read this, I thought to myself, is somebody stalking me, or is this a joke? I didn't really know, though. I had never noticed anybody following me around Costco or anything. I never went when it was all that busy either, so I thought I would have noticed. Usually, it would be about 10 a.m. when the store was still fairly quiet. I considered not going to Costco the next week. <laughs> Ultimately, though, I chose to go. I wanted to save money, and I figured that it was just a dumb joke or something. When the next Saturday came, I went back to the Costco at my usual time. It opened at 9.30, and I would get there at about 10 and be gone by 10.30. I started doing my normal shopping, going down all of the aisles I typically did, getting all of the products. I was careful to pay attention to if somebody was following me or not, but I didn't notice anyone. Paranoid! About halfway through, I was in one of the aisles towards the back of the store. On each side of the aisles, there were lots of pallets on the ground. There would be products on the pallets that you can buy. If you've never been to Costco before, you can buy things in bulk, and the store is kind of like a giant warehouse. Most of the products are not displayed the way they are in Target or a Walmart. So I was shopping, and for whatever reason, looked to the right. There were these products on pallets, and behind the products, I oh, saw a man hiding back there. That's a good thumbnail he was far right there. Back and hidden really well. He was also looking right at me. When Ooh, I saw him, real he quickly ducked down. I walked away and immediately went to the checkouts. This guy had to be the one who wrote me the letter. I didn't get a great look at him, but he seemed to be in his 20s and had darker hair. She needed a little taser when I got to the some checkout, pepper spray I told the or a little the register lick. about him. She said that she would talk to her manager about it. I just wanted to leave though. See like situations like this where like like girls be getting stocked and stuff. This is why you need to carry you so a pepper spray, taser, a blick maybe two you feel me stuff like this wouldn't happen there wouldn't be no no danger or fear at all just just get your license carry some shit okay 
and I figured that the guy would probably leave or hide before they got there. I left, and that same day canceled my Costco membership. There was no way that I could go back there. This really creeped me out, because apparently some guy had been watching me every time that I shopped. I had no idea, because he probably mm-hmm. hid in the aisles just about every time. Later that mm-hmm. night, I was at home by myself and got a knock on the door at like 8 p.m. Oh. I got up and went to the window and looked outside. It was the same guy oh. that had been hiding in the Costco. My heart started racing. He knocked again after I didn't answer the door right away. I stayed in the living room and just wanted him to leave. Grab a knife, call after the police. About five minutes, he knocked once more. I Make sure the doors not are locked. To answer. I stayed where I was, and after a little while, I thought that he left until I heard Look, a knock from to find the back side of my house. He was now at the back door. Mm-hmm. This was creeping me out too much, and I called the police on him. He wasn't trying to break in, but was certainly trying hard to get me to answer. I didn't know what he was going to do if I did. He didn't knock for a long time, and I think then that he actually left. When the police got there, they looked around outside and couldn't find the guy anywhere. They said that if he came back, for me to not hesitate to call. For the rest of that night, though, he didn't come back. I didn't see him for several days and was not going to go back to Costco either. But later that week, I got another letter from him. This letter was a little bit longer than the first. He said that he was disappointed that I didn't want to talk to him, and even more disappointed that I called the police on him. But then he said that he was sorry and was not going to bother me anymore. I was really surprised to read He's that, nice but the crazy thing is that after that letter, I haven't heard from him or seen him since. So he's gonna it's leave amazing to me Don't how he stopped after going to such lengths. I mean, he found out where I lived and watched me while hiding inside of Costco. I guess he had enough common sense to know that I got the police involved and he would possibly get in some serious trouble if he continued. Either way, I'm glad that I haven't seen him since. And that I might have been I a good thumbnail too, too but I'm going to still use the again. first one. Because it's Costco theme, and I think the first one fits the thumbnail. I had a Costco better. membership last year. Unless they have a better a thumbnail in this story. It seemed like a good deal. And no, at I just first, picked I liked it a lot. About it. I would shop there at least one time per week, but usually more. One day, I went there to get some groceries and everyday items. I had a lot of shopping to do that day, and Costco was not the only store that I had to go to. There was one other store that I would be going to afterwards. I spent a while shopping inside Costco, Strong and when I was done, I was really hungry. I stopped at the cafe that they had at the front of the store. There was an area to buy food and drinks and some tables set up around it. I got some pizza and churros and went to one of the tables to eat. I did Crazy not want to eat in my car. I was at a table on the side, kind of in the corner of the cafeteria area. I was just minding my own business, eating, and looked up to see this guy staring right at me. He was sitting in front of me, and there were two open tables in between us. The guy was staring at me so intense that it instantly creeped me out. He had these wide eyes, and I looked down right away. When I looked up again, he was still staring. Was this guy joking around? It didn't really seem like it. I didn't know know him either. Whichever one y'all think is better. Staring at me like this. If I don't choose it, I'll switch it to it. I didn't to talk to him or anything. It was really weird, and I decided to just go out to my car and leave. I got up from the table and walked away. When I did, luckily, the man remained at his table sitting there. That might be I went out to now. the parking lot and found my car. I got inside and finished eating my churros in there. Then I headed to my final stop of the day, one last store. This store was just five minutes away, and it was pretty busy when I got there, just like Costco had been. I drove to find an open parking space towards the back and parked my car. Then I went inside and did my shopping. It didn't take as long in there, maybe about 15 minutes. I came back out and got to my car and went inside of it. When I did, across the parking lot, I saw the same guy. Jesus. He was sitting inside of a car in the driver's seat and staring at me almost the same way that he had been earlier at Costco. This creeped me out even more so than before. I immediately backed out and started driving away to leave. The problem was that I kind of had to drive by his car to exit the parking lot. I should probably, um, because I just realized that I was talking over the video for some of that. My fault, man. I'm I. I'm tripping. As I drove past him, I saw his car pull out and began driving behind me. My heart sank when I saw this. 
Now I was leaving the parking lot with this creep right behind me. Running off the road. I turned right, and he did the same. Then I drove down the road for a little ways and turned again. He remained right on my tail. I didn't even care about going home anymore at that point. I just started randomly driving, turning at almost every opportunity. Soon, I didn't really even know where I was anymore. I was just going down random quiet roads. I got inside of a residential area, and the guy was still following me. It became clear to me that this guy would follow me wherever I went. I wasn't sure what to Drive do. Drive right to a police station. But that's station. when I finally got the idea to go to the police station. Yep. I put the closest one in on my phone and then followed the directions to get there. It took maybe 10 minutes, with the guy following me the entire time. When I got there, I pulled into the parking lot, and the guy didn't. He kept driving down the road. It worked, just as I hoped it would. I waited there for a while before actually going home. I was afraid that the guy would be waiting around some corner or something and then keep following me, but luckily, he wasn't. I was able to make it home safely and did not see him again. I used to work at Costco. My job was mainly as a cashier up at the check lanes. I had this job for six months and it was okay. Something really scary happened once though, so I thought I would share my experience. It all started on a Friday night. I was working a shift where I got off at 8 p.m. I'm not sure when I started, but it wasn't too long of a shift. Things went by pretty easy and I know that it was dark outside when I got off. After clocking out, I left the store to go to my car. I had parked at the back end of the parking lot, kind of in the middle. Behind our parking lot, there were some more businesses of other stores and restaurants, but they were separated by a row of trees. I was excited to go home after a long day of work, and I got within like 20 feet of my car and took out my keys. I was about to push the unlock button on my key fob when I saw something. Somebody was inside of my car. Crazy. I stopped in my tracks and looked. It appeared as though there was a man sitting in the back seat of my car. That's crazy. He was looking in the other direction and not towards me. I double checked to make sure that this was in fact my car. I knew that it was, but why was somebody inside of it? I didn't go any further and turned around and walked back for the Costco entrance. That's my real. mind was racing. I was trying to figure out how and why somebody would be inside of my car. And I was also wondering what I should do about it now. I found a coworker inside of the store who I was friendly with and told her about what had happened. She offered to come outside with me and look to see if the person was still there. We both walked out and slowly approached my car. We stopped at about 50 feet away and looked. She is not going to help you it fight. like he was not gone now. We didn't see anything. We walked closer to the car. I'm saying no offense to this girl, bro, but it's no way. There's no way he couldn't find a better partner to be outside for this situation right now. Because there's no way he went in the store, grabbed her and was like, bro, is somebody in my car? I need you to come out there with me. That's not who I'm grabbing. I'm going there and grabbing the biggest nigga I find. Probably going to be me, but I'm going to find the second biggest nigga I see in there. And we're both going to go out there and check my car. Very carefully, we made it within probably 10 feet. That's when we could see the guy was still there That's and ducking crazy. down in the back. That's crazy. Luckily, he did not see us. We walked back a ways, and my coworker told me to hit the unlock button to my car to see if the guy would leave. I did, and we waited, kind of hiding behind another car. The guy did not leave my vehicle, though. Nah, he's waiting we for could no ass. longer see him because he was ducked down still, but we would be able to tell if he left my car. He stayed inside. After waiting for like 30 seconds to a minute, we both headed back inside of Costco. We were thinking about calling the police. After talking for several minutes inside and talking to another coworker about it, I decided that I would. I walked back outside and, called the police and stood near the entrance doors of Costco as I began dialing. But it was at this point that I saw the guy actually get out of my car. He left out the rear passenger side door, oh, which yeah, was the farthest away from it. me. Then I saw him slip away behind the trees leading to some other businesses nearby. Crazy. I carefully walked back to my car. I kept my eyes on the trees the entire time. The guy was now out of my sight, and who knows where, but if he came back, I would see him. I was able to get inside of my car and lock the doors. Then, finally, I drove back to my house. When I got home, Crazy. I looked throughout my car. Everything seemed the same. I never really kept anything of value inside of it. In fact, I didn't really have anything in it at all. 
so nothing was stolen and nothing was damaged either. I don't know what the guy was doing in there, but it really gives me the creeps. Did he know that it was specifically my car? Is it just a random thing? Want to mess with people? I don't know. I figured that I must have forgotten to lock my car doors though. Usually, I always remember to lock them, but it must have slipped my mind. I don't know how else to explain him being able to get inside of my car. I'm just glad that he left though. He must have realized that I knew he was in my car when I unlocked it, but never got inside. All right, that's it for this one, man. I hope that y'all enjoy. If y'all did, like, comment, subscribe, share, share, turn the post notification bells on, and peace, love, and positivity. I don't catch y'all in the next one, bro. It's two options in this world. Is you gon' win or lose? Is you gon' take the risk or not? You know you gotta choose. Yeah, I can't keep one, so all my bitches come in twos.